Hey guys, Omni here. So over the weekend, I finally saw Disney's Encanto and I just want to give you guys my quick thoughts on it. I'm going to spend a lot of time breaking down the film or anything like that for you guys, especially since it's been in theaters and I'm just now catching it on Disney Plus. So I'm just going to kind of gloss over a couple things. Of course, this film is uh, the latest entry from Walt Disney Animation. It's directed by Jared Bush and Brian Howard. Uh, and they've worked on things like Tangled, Bolt, and Zootopia, stuff like that. So they're not unfamiliar to this. I think Jared Bush, this is his first actual directing credit, though. The music in the film is brought to us by Lin-Manuel Miranda, so you can expect it to be good. He also has a writing credit in the screenplay, so that's kind of interesting as well. The cast itself stars quite a few people that I'm sure you'll recognize if you're a fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Steffi Patrice is our lead character, Maribel Madrigal. We have John Leguizamo, we have Diane Guerrera, we have Wilmer uh, Valderrama. The story itself centers around this family, the family Madrigal, who went through this tragedy in their earlier in their lives, and this miracle was bestowed upon their family with this candle that grants its users magical abilities, a special singular gift per person in the family. Each time there is somebody new birthed into the family, this candle, there's a ceremony that takes place, and this candle grants the, somebody in their family a gift that can be used to help push and grow the family forward. And they end up uh, growing this community in this Encanto, which grows beyond the family. There's plenty of people that are outside of this that have become welcomed into this area and rely on them as well, and the magic that comes from their family. And till one day... Um, it's Maribel's turn, played by Stephanie Patrice, and she goes up to receive her gift, and she doesn't get one. And from that point forward, there's this kind of, like, fear and lament within the family itself that this power might be fading. So this weighs on everybody throughout the film, and it kind of definitely puts a lot of pressure on her because she takes a lot of internal responsibility for that. So this kind of plays around with, one, her. she's the only one that in this family that does not have a gift. It's really interesting how it plays around with these ideas of familial pressure, like, you know, these facades that you try to put on just to make your family happy, you know, pretending to be perfect, trying to make sure that everything is exactly the way it should be just to make your family happy, not turning things down and fear of being, uh, of letting down your family as you're pushing things forward and just being the odd man out. Um, like Mirabelle being the black sheep. How do you fit in in this family of greats when you're just kind of the one that doesn't really shine as bright? Or at least that's how you feel. And it really plays with a lot of these ideas, some of the toxicity that can come from um, these expectations of perfection that come out of a family unit that kind of has this kind of narrative around it, like where everybody is respected, looked up to, and held up on these higher standards, up on these pedestals, not only within their own family, but within their community. And how do you live up to that expectation? What do you do when you feel that you've let people down, when you feel responsible for more, for more than just yourself? Like, it plays around with a lot of really interesting ideas, and I really like how they approached all of that. As far as the songs go, there's two standouts for me. Uh, Surface Pressure, which is sung by Jessica Darrow, who is the... Uh, Louisa, she's the strong sister. Uh, that was probably my favorite song in it. Next in line would be Don't Talk About Bruno. Again, I won't talk about it. Don't, don't do spoilers, but great song. The payoff, I would say, to some of these threads, uh, I, I don't think hits nearly as hard as it could have. While it plays around with a lot of these elements quite well, I think the overall flow of the story could have been handled a little bit better. Um, it never really quite reached the emotional peaks that I've reached with other films uh, that we've watched from the studio. Uh, I know it's not Pixar, but I will say that the animation in this, it made me forget that this wasn't a Pixar film. And I know Walt Disney Animation does some great work, but it's I always felt like Pixar has always been on like another level. And with Luca having come out this year and been like a movie that I thought was really beautiful, I think this movie actually gives it quite the run for its money, if not even more visually stunning in a lot of different places and the animation was very 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 fluid i think the weakest part of this film for me is just the overall story and definitely definitely the ending didn't work for me there's a couple of pl plot threads that i feel like uh didn't have the impact i think they were hoping for and i think it's because they just kind of rushed a few things here and there um particularly with this storyline surrounding bruno um, I really wish that would have been a little more, given a little more attention, but then the ending just felt like there, 
there wasn't they didn't really get a chance. This is one of those endings where if it had just ended a few moments before it actually ended, I would have been way more satisfied with it. But it goes a little extra step that I feel like takes a little bit of the weight away from the ending. But overall, it was an enjoyable film. But guys, let me know what you thought of the film. Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join our Discord. We could talk about it there as well. And before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Sherritt, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yuri Koreskov, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Jeffrey Hale, and various abominations. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. And going into the new year, I hope you're all safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.